Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Miss Haley from Code Speak Labs, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are building what is sometimes recognized as one of the first ever video games in the world. Do you know what it is? The game is called Pong. Sometimes you might refer to this as table tennis, and we're going to be building this game in scratch. So today is going to be a super fun project. Y'all ready? Let's go! Alright everybody, we're going to jump straight into our Pong project of the day. So here's what we're building. I have the game already open, and if I click the green flag, we're going to play some Pong. So you see every time the ball hits the paddle, we have our score going up. And let's see what happens if it hits the red line. Oh! So every time it hits the red line, our score goes down. Yeah, this game is actually pretty addicting, so I could play this all day. Um, but this is, that's the gist of it, and we're going to be building this in Scratch. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so I have a brand new Scratch project open. The first thing, first things first, why don't we start by picking a backdrop. So the one that we used, we'll go down to the bottom right hand corner, click the backdrop button. We use the neon tunnel backdrop, but feel free to use whatever backdrop your heart desires. And we're gonna get rid of this cat. We don't really need him for the ping pong game. And we're gonna pick two sprites, one for the paddle and one for the ball. So we're gonna go to the bottom right hand corner, click choose a sprite. And let's grab our ball sprite. And we're gonna grab our paddle sprite. Beautiful. So for our game today, we're going to be coding for a couple situations. And we mainly have two. The first situation is what happens if the ball touches the paddle? So that's one situation we have to code for. And the second one we're coding for is what happens if the ball doesn't touch the paddle and instead hits the ground? So in our example, we added a little baseline for our game, and we're going to do the same thing for our Scratch project now. So let's first start by coding the movement for the ball. Let's start with that. So we're going to go down to the events, and we're going to drag when the green flag is clicked, and we're going to have our ball start in a certain position, just any time the game starts. So we're going to go to motion, we're going to drag our coordinate x and y block and let's change it to 20 and 150. And we'll also have it point in the direction of 45 degrees. Awesome. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag a forever block in. And we can find this inside of our control section. Drag in the forever block and we're going to give our ball some movement. So we're going to go back into motion, drag and move 10 steps and a block that says if on edge bounce. So all we're doing right now is just basically giving our ball movement when the green flag is clicked. So if we test this out, I click the green flag and we see that it is bouncing all over the place in random directions and we see that anytime it hits the edge of the screen it's gonna bounce back because we don't want it to go out of the screen that would be bad awesome so our ball currently moves that's good the next thing we want to do is we want to account for what happens if the ball touches the paddle right because that's the whole objective of pong is to hit the ball with the paddle so let's code for that next we're going to drag in the same block when green flag clicked, our favorite one, and we're going to drag a, another forever loop. And can you guess what block we're going to need next? That's right, we're going to need the if then block. Awesome. Oh, 
I almost forgot. We're going to add a score to our game, so let's make sure to add that in. So let's go down to variables and we're going to drag our set my variable. Let's put this after when the green flag is clicked. Awesome. And let's rename this variable to score. And we're going to check that off on the left hand side of the screen and make sure it shows up. Beautiful. Perfect. So we had we added our score to our project. The next thing I want to do is we want to check for conditionals. So the condition that we're checking is whether or not our ball touches the paddle. So to do this, we can go into the sensing section and we're going to grab touching mouse pointer. And we're going to change this to the name of our paddle sprite, which is just paddle. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the score anytime our ball touches the paddle, right? So we want our user to gain points if it hits the ball. So to do this, we can go into the variable section. We're going to drag change score by one. And let's spice things up a little bit. Why don't we add some sound to our project to make things a little bit more fun. We can go to sound, start sound. I guess we can do pop. So let's try this out so far. Oh. I'm not sure if I'm crazy about that sound. Let's see if we can find another one. Sound. Let's choose a sound. I like this water droplet. Much better. All right, and the next block we're going to drag in is inside our emotion section, and it is called turn 180 degrees. And then we'll be sure to add a little bit of a weight. Perfect, so all we've done right now is we've coded movement for the ball and we've checked whether or not the ball touches the paddle and if so, let's increase that score. But right now our paddle should not be moving because we have not coded for it. There we go. Awesome. All right, so we coded for our first situation. The second situation we want to code for is what happens if the ball misses the paddle and it hits the ground. So to do that, we can add a little region to the bottom of our backdrop that will basically be the ground for our game. So to do that, we're going to click backdrop. And let's just add a little section at the bottom. I'll use the square tool and I'll put it all the way at the bottom of my screen and let's change that to red. And then we'll go back into our code section. All right, so we've basically drawn on the ground to our backdrop screen. So what we can do now is we'll click our ball sprite and what we're going to code for next is what happens if the ball touches the red section. So let's do that. We're going to drag when green flag clicked and we're going to drag another forever block inside. And can you guess what's next? You got it. We need another if statement. And just like last time when we did if touching paddle we can go back into the sensing section and we're going to test for if the ball touches not the paddle this time, but touching color. So let's drag that in. And the color we're gonna be testing for is the same one we just drew. 
So if you forgot what color you drew on the backdrop, make sure you go back and check. So to do this, the color that we used, let's put the color zero, saturation 100, and then inside my code, I will do the exact same, color zero, saturation 100. Awesome. All right, so what's gonna happen if the ball touches the ground? Is our score going to increase or decrease? That's right, it's not gonna go up. It's going to go down this time. So we can go back into our variables section and we can change our score by not positive one this time, but negative one. And let's just add some sound to spice things up again. Start sound, and instead of our water droplet, why don't we add another sound? Let's go to our sound library. And I'm kind of feeling the laser, so let's do the laser sound. But feel free to pick whatever sound you'd like. And let's change that. And then we'll also add a little bit of a weight. All right, and one more thing we're going to do. So let's go back into backdrops real quick. And to make sure that our ball actually senses when it touches the ground, we're going to do one more thing. So we're going to click our selector tool. We're going to highlight the rectangle. This is the red rectangle we just made. And we're going to go to fill and we're going to select that same color. So I did color zero, saturation 100. let's try it out and you see our score goes down anytime it touches the red and it goes up anytime it touches that paddle awesome so we coded for our ball the next thing we're going to do is we're going to code for our paddle so only three blocks we need the first one we're going to need you probably guessed it when green flag clicked the second one is we're going to need a forever block And the last block we need is inside of our motion section. It says go to random position, but we're going to change that to mouse pointer. And basically what that means, wherever we drag our mouse, the paddle is going to follow. All right, so let's test out our game. Aha. Oh. Nice. Awesome, and there you have it. That's all we have for today, folks. If you enjoyed today's project of Pong, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and make sure to check us out on codespeaklabs.com. And also, we have another announcement for you. Every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Coach Jangus from Code Speak Labs will be doing a live stream session on our YouTube channel. So be sure to tune in. The link is in the description below. And last but never least, we cannot forget. Cue the virtual applause. All right, hope you all have fun today. Uh, make sure to join us next time for another Scratch project on our YouTube channel. My name is Coach Haley from Codespeak Labs. Log it off. See ya.